Hey everyone, it's Jeff Douglas with Appear in Clouds, folks. Just want to show you an application that I wrote to let you process records externally from Salesforce. So let's say you have some type of process where you update account information and you want to send those records over to, let's say, an SAP system or Oracle for processing. Anyway, you want to take records in Salesforce and programmatically update an external system. This is a great app that you can do that for. This. So typically what you do with that type of scenario is you would have some type of Java application running um, externally that would actually pull and just query a custom object or a standard object looking for records that had changed. And once they change, it'll grab that record and then send it to, I don't know, some external system for processing. So we're gonna show you how to do that using um, the streaming API from force.com um, and we're gonna use a Rails app that I built. Now I originally did this for Dreamforce with a Node app, but uh, recently there's a new RESTforce um, gem for Ruby, which makes it super simple to use the streaming API uh, on Heroku with Salesforce. So I'll, I'll walk you through that real quick. So first, the, the actual code is at this GitHub repo right here. And there are instructions on how to run this app. So if you've got Ruby installed, which if you have a Mac, you're gonna already have it installed, you can just we'll walk through these um, instructions and go ahead and set this app up, okay? So what you wanna do first is you want to actually log into your Salesforce org. I, I suggest using the DE org to start off with. And there's a custom object called log, and there's a class called logger. And it's in this directory right here, you'll see it. So there's log and you can just install that and then there's actually a class called logger and what you do with logger is you're actually gonna your apex code will actually call this class and pass over values and we'll add it to the logger for you it's a custom object so I'll show you how to do that real quick so once you're in force.com here is the custom object alright so it's a custom object nothing's fancy it's gonna have a class a level so you've got different things like um, the severity of the logging, so you've got info, debug, warn, error, and fatal. It's got a short message, which you can add here, so more like a, a short description, and then the extended message, and that's the actual long text of message. Now, the streaming API will not stream this extended message, because it's a long text area. So what you do is typically you are gonna stream um, the API, I'm sorry, the class name, the level, and the short message, and then once you see this in paper trail, and you want more information, you would just go look it up by the name of the log file. All right, so we've got that installed. So once you install that, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a remote access in Salesforce. And that's basically what you're gonna use to get your OAuth keys. So there's a, a video here you can look and see how to do it, but we're gonna run through it real quickly. It's typically you just come here and go remote access, and I've already got some set up. So what you would do is you would actually create a new one and you would give it a name and an email address. And for this instance, just give it a callback URL. Now what you want to do here for, for this callback URL is if you're running it locally, use localhost and you don't need HTTPS. If you're running it, let's say externally on Heroku or something else like that, you're going to need HTTPS. But uh, they don't require HTTPS for localhost, so that's one thing you want to keep in mind here. Once you save that, it's going to give you the tokens you need. So you're going to need your consumer key and your consumer secret. And I'll show you that in a second when we're going to need that, okay? So let's go back to our instructions here. So we've got our remote access set up. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create push topics in Salesforce. Now this is what they use for streaming. So the push topics are just a, um, it's another custom object that you add entries to. So there's the actual the code right here to add a new push topic. So all it does is say I want to create a push topic called log entries. It's got a description. And this is the actual query that it runs. And we're going to only send streaming. We're only going to stream new records across to our app when they're created, and we're going to look for all fields. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this here. Actually, this is really simple. We'll go back into Salesforce. We'll the developer console here. Let me resize this for a second here. All right. So you can see I've already done this before. Just paste that in there, and once you hit. Once you hit execute, I've already got this created, so I'm not going to do this, of course. You hit execute, you'll see um, in the log here, you'll see that it's success, and it'll add a new push topic. The cool thing about this also is that you can actually do this in Workbench. So if you ever used Workbench before, you can actually do the same thing in Workbench, and then you can subscribe to what's called subscribe to these push topics in the Workbench, and you can watch them stream across in the browser. So that's pretty cool. 
Okay, so now we've got our custom object set up in Salesforce. We've got our OAuth tokens that we're going to need for our Rails application. And we've got our push topics in, um, installed so that we can start listening for streaming records that come across from our log custom object. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab the code for this Rails app. Now it's a really simple Rails app. Um, it literally was about, I think it, I just created a new application and added a new initializer, which I'll show you in a second here, and then started the application. So it was super simple. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to run these commands here to grab the code here. So I'm assuming you have Git and you have the Roku tool belt installed. So I'm at the desktop, so I'm just going to paste this in here. I'm just going to clone that. And then I'm going to switch to this. And then I'm going to run Bundler to install all my gems. All right, so now that's working. What this is going to do is it's going to clone the repo. We're going to switch to it. We're going to install all our gems. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use Foreman. Foreman's a super simple way to run your apps both locally and on Heroku. It comes part of the Heroku tool belt. So what you have to do for that is, let's see, let's install all my gems here. So let's go ahead and open this up. I'm going to open it up in Sublime. And let me go ahead and resize this a little bit. All right, so that should be good enough right there. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create um, an env file, and what that's used that's used for Foreman to load your environmental variables up. So, and use that. Okay, so you can see we got that right here, and then. Here's what we're going to copy out of. These are our settings we need for this application. We're going to have the username, the password, security token, the client ID for the remote access, and the secret for the remote access. So I'm going to copy these out right here. I'm going to paste these in. So I'm going to go ahead and put my credentials in here, and then I'm going to change them later on. So I'm hanging on one second here. I'm going to pause this here. Okay, so there are my credentials, and I'm going to save this. And here's the only part of the app that really makes any sense, or that's important here, is, is the initializer, wrong one here. There is a file in the initializer called streaming. What that does is when you start the app up, it's gonna create a new instead of the rest force object, to pass over the credentials that you just added in there. And then it's gonna try to authenticate. Once it authenticates, it's gonna use event machine, it's gonna actually start listening for events coming out of Salesforce. It's gonna listen for this log entries channel and that's what we set up right here so we set the log entries that's how it connects to that channel and then what's going to do is going to when it receives a event that's been pushed across it's going to just display the level the class name and the short message and then the name of the record so in case you want to look that up in the in Salesforce so that's the only thing this application does so you can you can change anything about this I use a rails app because it'd be easier to integrate with um, your existing application you might have it's pretty simple to set up. You can get rid of this debugging if you don't want to see what the, the rest force information looks like. That's no problem at all. Okay, so let's go back and look at instructions here. So we cloned it locally. We've got our credentials set up. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start Foreman. So Foreman's super simple. Make sure I save this. I did, okay. So what we're gonna do is now, go back to the terminal here, and we're gonna do Foreman start, and we're gonna specify the port, 3000. All right, so there you go. So now Foreman started. Now let's go back here, and we'll go into Salesforce, and we will create a new record. So you can either do this, you know, programmatically through that Apex class that's there, or you can just add a new one in here. So let's go ahead and add a new one. Debug, and we'll say, and there's a class that's food. So you might want to log that you have an error in a certain class, and. Uh, all right, so now we'll go ahead and save this. And magically in the background, you should see it's coming across here. Maybe I'll just cancel it so you can see a little easier. All right, so here we go. So this is when it loaded up. You see it, it connected to Salesforce with all my, all my credentials for this org. And now here's my debug. You can see it's lit listening, started the server up, listening for connections. And there's my debug information that streamed across right there. So pretty cool. Okay, so now you want to get this, of course, running on Heroku. No problem at all. So let's see. 
So now what we want to do is we want to create an app on Heroku. Super simple. So we'll do, I'm already logged into Heroku. And so I'm going to do Heroku. Create. what I called it, trail logger, okay, trail. So we'll create that. All right, so that what that'll do is that'll create a new app on Heroku, and it'll add the Git repo to, or the Git um, address to my repo here locally. So now what I wanna do is I can do, um, I can add these here. I can, let's go ahead and, um, Go ahead and add our configuration variables. So what we do with, with Heroku, you add these configuration variables, which is similar to Foreman. Foreman's gonna use your configuration variables in Heroku to actually add, um, to hook those up to your org. So you do it this way with, with the Heroku app. So you do Heroku config add, the name of the variable, and then the value. So this is what we did similar. So I'm gonna grab those real quick. So I'll do, the, I'll do the first one, and you can see that it sets it up. So I'm going to pause this while I enter the other ones real quick here. So now you see I have all my variables in there. I can do Heroku config to see all those. There they are, right there. There's all my all my variables. So now so now we've got uh, we need to push this over to Heroku. So you get push the master branch to Heroku. You'll see that's going up there. I'm going to pause that while that pushes. So now we've got our app here on Heroku out there. So the next thing we want to do is let's go back here. So we've got a deploy. We pushed up there. Now we want to add the paper trail in there. So let's go ahead and add paper trail. You can either do this from the command line or you can log into Heroku and do it. We're going to do it from the command line real quick. So I'll add that. It adds paper trail. So now if I actually go into Heroku, I should see this in here. Let's go ahead and refresh this. There we go. There's our SFDC Rails Paper Patrol Logger, and then I can go to I can go to the resources right here, and you can see I have Paper Trail installed there. So if I want to access Paper Trail, access Paper Trail for this application, I would just click on right here, and let's see. It's probably setting up right now. It takes a few minutes to set up, no problem. So now we've got, uh, we've got everything we need for the app. The app's installed on Heroku. We have the Paper Trail Logger installed. It should be listening for records in a second here. So now what we can do is we can start um, adding records to our log custom object in Salesforce and they'll start showing up here in Paper Trail. So let's go ahead and do that here. Let me make sure, I think I've, yeah, that, that's not started anymore, okay. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and log a new record here. All right, so just clone this one real quick and we'll change it. There we go. And we'll hit save. And there we should start seeing some records here. Takes a few minutes to pick this up. I'm gonna pause until the paper shows all set up and listening. It takes it takes about two or three minutes for it to set up. There you go. You can see now that paper trail kicked in. It took about about 45 seconds or so. And you can see there is the depot that came across. So let's go ahead and start this again now. We'll add another one. Get another one. All right, and make this one a warning. Let's see. Oh, there, there you go. That's how fast it was. Came across already. So the cool thing about this now is now you have all these log messages you can start getting information from anywhere in your application and don't have to worry about Salesforce logging for this. Now, of course, the, the draw, drawback is that if your records um, do not commit, so if the transaction fails and the records aren't committed to the database, it won't stream, of course. So that's the only drawback with this. But you can use this same methodology if you want to do things like um, we use it for a mail server. So if you want to stream records. Um, to a Heroku app and send it free via email, you can do it that way. Or you can use any kind of records, not necessarily just the log records, but almost any kind of record that Salesforce supports. So there you go. That's a quick demo on how to set up a, a neat little Rails app to uh, log events in Salesforce using um, Streaming API.